Hi, welcome back to Serger Tip Clips. Have you ever tried to do any surface embellishing with your serger on an unstable knit and you haven't been very happy with the results because the knit is, it kind of shimmies around or it stretches or distorts and puckers? Well, today I'm going to show you how to do picture perfect pin tucks on any kind of a knit and you're going to love the results and it's super, super easy. I think you'll be excited. So let's get started. I'm wearing view B of my latest pattern, Triangulate the T. Here it is. And uh, the back has uh, a V on it that can be embellished as well. But what I wanted to do for this one was some serger embellishing with pin tucks as well as cover and chain stitching. So I found the greatest product for doing the pin tucks. I had practiced and I changed my differential feed and I did everything else when I was doing the pin tucks, but I wasn't 100% happy. It looked good, but it wasn't 100% perfect. So I thought to myself, you know what I really need is a sticky wash away stabilizer to put under and that way there's no need to change your differential feed. It keeps everything smooth, extremely stable, and it works perfectly. And this is what I use. It's Sulky's Sticky Fabrisolvi. And um, what I did was I cut it in little strips. It's a roll right now. And let me show you the strips that I cut. They're about a half inch wide and for the pin tucks. And so I just cut a bunch of little strips like that. And I'm going to show you how to put that on your fabric. It washes away 100%. You won't have any kind of stiffness or problem at all. And then I even decided to use wider strips and where I had marked the lines for the cover and chain stitching on this shirt. It worked perfectly for that as well. And I have a white version of this. I'm going to show it to you. Let me just grab it and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So on this one, here is the back V that I was talking about. And here are the perfect pin tucks. And in between, I did a row, uh, a couple of rows of chain stitching. I did a narrow cover stitch and a triple cover stitch. And it was, um, that was done with the wrong side face up so that the chain looper thread would show on the right side of the fabric. So let's talk about the technical logistics for this technique. I have a piece of the same fabric uh, from the shirt that I'm wearing. And as you can see, it's very stretchy. It's a very lightweight rayon knit. It's wonderful to wear. But um, again, for this technique, you really want to make sure that it's very stabilized. So let's talk about how we go about doing um, the placement of the pin tucks. You're going to decide yourself how far apart you want those. And I used an air erasable marker to draw my lines. And this is just a for instance, you can do it any way you want to do it. But then what I'm going to do is on the serger, I am going to switch out from the standard foot to a blind hem foot. And the blind hem foot has a little flange or guide right along the side that can be adjusted. And the way you do that is just with a little screwdriver, you loosen that screw on top and you can slide the guide to the right or left. For this technique, I have the guide all the way to the right, as far right as I can get it. And this is a perfect example of what I like to talk about in embellishment classes and also serger classes. Just because a foot has a certain name, and this is the blind hem foot, they'll multitask for you. There are lots of different ways that you can use a blind hem foot. And the reason it's so great for the pin tucks is because this little guide on the side is going to slide along exactly where I want the pin tuck to be. And it's going to protect the fabric from the cutting blade. So I don't have to worry about nicking into that at all. Very, very easy to use. I'm going to put that aside for the time being and I'll snap it on my, on my machine in just a minute. But I talked earlier about the um, little half inch strips of the sticky wash away Fabrisolvi. And I am going to just peel off the paper. And sometimes this is the most 
tricky part of the whole thing. And it's adhesive on one side. Now you can put it above or below the line that you're going to be doing the pin tech on. It really is not critical. But what I like to do is just gently press it down, get it to where I need it. I'm just going to put one on for right now just to show you how I do that. And oftentimes when we do pin tucks, whether it's on our sewing machine or serger, you need to press a crease along the line that you want to um, do the pin tuck on. Well, because we have this strip and it's a nice straight edge, guess what? All you have to do is fold your fabric right against it. Again, don't stretch it, but just right against it. But the whole trick is that the side where the stabilizer is adhered to, that you want to be face up on your serger as you're stitching. So I am going to position it like, well, actually, let me turn it around like this for the camera for you. So it's oriented correctly. But this is the sticky side of the stabilizer. And that's going to go face up, facing you as you stitch. So I'm going to go to the machine and get myself set up for a three thread rolled hem. I'm going to snap on my blind hem foot and show you how to do this. And I think you're going to be very excited because it comes out fantastic. I'm set up at the machine. I have my blind hem foot on and here is that little guide or flange I was talking about and here's my cutting blade. So you can see how that's going to protect the edge of the fabric from the cutting blade so it won't nick it. And again, it's all the way over to the right. I have my strips of the Fabrisolvi on the wrong side of my fabric. So let me just get you oriented. I am going to make sure that side of the fabric is face up, the one that, where it is adhered to, and I'm just tucking under the underside of the fabric, and I just want to make sure it's right against the edge of that um, in, uh, of the stabilizer. So, and then that fold is going to ride right along the flange or the guide on my blind hem foot. I am set up for a three thread rolled hem. I've adjusted my stitch width to what um, M on this machine, but you'll check your manual for your correct setups. I have my stitch length on 1.5, but depending on the look that you want and the fabric that you're using, you may want to uh, do some samples and test different um, stitch lengths just to see the one that you prefer. Even though this is that unstable knit, the pin tuck itself is completely stabilized, so I can leave my differential feed on N or 1. And um, I popped in a bluer thread for the rolled hem stitch, um, so it will show good contrast on this green fabric. But another option is that you could put in a really nice embroidery thread in your upper looper and get a very pretty little sheen that's kind of delicate looking, very, very pretty. So let's get this set and um, start stitching. Again, that side with the stabilizer is face up. I'm butting that fold right against the guide. I'm making sure that that fabric is tucked under nice and smooth. And I'm ready to start stitching. I have my foot down. I'm hanging on to my thread tail till my needle bites into the fabric itself. You're going to take your time. Just make sure as you go along, let me put my pointer down, that your fabric is nice and smooth. How about that for not one bit of distortion, no stretching? It's absolutely perfect. So I put a few other strips on and I would just repeat the process again and I'd have all of my embellishing done, but it just does such a great job on these stretchy knits that I think you'll love the technique. And let me know if you have any questions about it. 
Thanks for joining me today for Picture Perfect Pin Tucks on Your Serger. For more in-depth information and tips, tricks, and techniques on your serger, be sure to check out my book, Serger Essentials, Master the Basics and Beyond. It's available on my website in the store. And while you're in there, be sure to check out my latest pattern that was featured in today's tip clip, Triangulate the T. That's my niece on the cover, isn't she cute? And one more goodie to tell you about is starting Friday, March 10th through Monday, March 13th, Craftsy has all of their classes on sale for under $20. So you can get the links for my 40 techniques every sewer should know, as well as the cover stitch basics and beyond class on my website. But you also might want to check out some of their other classes. Spring is coming, although I think we're supposed to get snow in a couple of days. But you might want to check out some of their gardening classes as well, just to get ready and have a beautiful yard. If you have any questions, be sure to send them along. And thanks for joining me. I'll see you soon.